right, looks like I am live here. This is my first time streaming. Uh, just to give a little background, I am building a game in uh, Go, where the server is running Go, and then the client will be UE4 or Unreal Engine, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm still in the process of designing the actual uh, server code, so I'm kind of messing around with different designs. Um, and what I'm trying to build is a game that I used to love playing that shut down called Atlas Reactor. So this game was killed by Tryon a couple of years ago, I think. But basically it's a multiplayer turn-based uh, MOBA. So you would have four players um, who would compete and you have these kind of turns you can take and it's a cell-based 2D grid. It's got power-ups, it's got abilities. And I figured that would be a great game for my first uh, game engine. So that's pretty much where I'm at. So when you're doing game server development, um, usually with multiplayer games, you would have uh, two clients that would either talk to each other over peer-to-peer. -peer. So you'd have a initial server that would start, would do matchmaking. From the matchmaking, you would then have the two clients create the match, and then they would just communicate with each other and not worry about the server. One of them would become the authority, and then they would uh, kind of play out that way. The way that I'm building it, however, is that <clears throat> the clients are going to be dumb. They're not going to know anything about pretty much anything except for taking the inputs and then reading the outputs from the server. So the server is going to be doing all the calculations, um, doing all the uh, matchmaking, pretty much everything. So the benefit of doing it this way is that I'll be able to test this uh, a lot and I can kind of create my own little testing framework to test out different abilities and it's just so much faster and easier to do in a t 2D console based or headless version as opposed to worrying about UE4, loading all that up, loading all the assets. And this way I can really kind of hammer out the details of the, the gameplay um, in a 2D environment. And I can create a stupid little web uh, page to, to play it out so I have some visual representation but that's pretty much where I'm going um, so yeah I have uh, basically been going through uh, and kind of designing the various aspects of it so I have this game package with my uh, actions and characters and uh, client information session information state information the world levels that's all going to be within this this kind of layout and then on the other aspect you have the server code which is going to handle uh, I've chosen web sockets not the greatest for performance but it's easier for to testing as well as uh, supporting web clients if I wanted to in the future as well as uh, UE4 does have a web socket client that you can just hook in really easily so I don't have to worry about replication and all that other stuff with the, the networking stuff in UE4 so um, with the server now I have uh, I'm literally in the middle of rewriting the server to use channels as opposed to just allowing the clients to have go routines um, I'm going to explain that in a bit here but basically what's going to happen is we have a new server the server accepts clients uh, it's via WebSocket, so it'll be upgraded from HTTP request it's going to do some authentication, make sure that the user is valid. At this point, there's no persistence. I haven't added anything. Probably just going to go with Redis because that seems to be uh, the, the right choice for this kind of design for uh, level and gameplay stuff, for account stuff, Postgres for sure. So right now, it just creates a map of all the clients. Again, eh, I'm not too happy with this design, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so then once the client is connected, we basically have, uh, we have code. I'm just using simple JSON. I'll switch it to message pack or something later or binary, but for now, it's just easier to use JSON. So the client connects, they start up, uh, they get their connection, they start their network loop where they're basically just reading the, the WebSocket frames. They're gonna process incoming messages um, here there's basically going to take in network types and then depending on the type of message it'll further decode it so it's going to decode a part of the message and then uh, basically the data part will be decoded again depending on the type so it's just a way of doing uh, type checks so I don't have to uh, support decoding or checking various things for JSON I can just look at the type and then go from there so 
that's kind of the idea where you have the clients processing income connection messages, but I'm or in incoming messages. But what I'm thinking I should probably do is have a channel based server where we create the client, um, very similar to the same thing, except for passing in the old version, we were going to pass the, the server object directly to the client, which is uh, not, probably not a great idea. Um, this time, we're just going to pass a channel to it so that the new channel client, basically the same thing, except for this time when they read, they basically just have a Go, root or a go channel sending an event to the server. Um, this will allow me to do a number of things on the server, I think. For one, I'll be able to rate limit easier. I can basically set this to be a uh, buffer channel. Uh, so I could say, or I'm sorry, down here. So I could say it's only going to have 5,000 events, and then uh, anything over that will block the clients from sending any more messages. So I think I'm probably going to go this route, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, to give a more, I don't even know why I skipped right over this, but, um, oh no, it destroyed my readme. Boo. I had all, oh, hold on. Maybe I would full copy. Let's see what I do. Copy. Let's copy it back to. All right, let's see if I have my readme in there. Yay, much better. Okay, so here's the kind of flow that I'm thinking here. So the server is going to handle new connections from clients. The user wants to play. They're going to have to create a group. Now this could be a 1v1 or a 3v3. I've kind of limited to that because it's just easier to, to reckon with. Uh, so they create this group. Then they, if it's a 3v3, they will invite friends to fill their group. And they have to invite and fill the group to be able to queue. Once they queue um, or once they lock their characters, the leader will be able to enter the queue, which creates a team. Uh, the team basically has all the rating stuff for the match, uh, so that the matchmaker can know how to match people properly, uh, so you're not getting crushed all the time or always crushing people. It'll try to be balanced depending on two factors that I came up with. One is the rating of the team, so an aggregate of the team's rate. Uh, as well as the time that they've been in queue because you don't want someone sitting in queue for ages at some point you're just going to have to play a game where you get crushed or you crush people um, so there's always that kind of trade-off so the matchmaker puts the team into a match game and the way that i've kind of laid this out is that the matchmaker so will queue a team and then depending on the game type so if it's a um Oops, session type. If it's a 3v3, they'll go into one kind of game match, and if it's 1v1, they'll go into a different one. So that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. Uh, but what that's going to end up doing is going to queue to that uh, game type. So if we go to queue, we're going to get the team, and then we're putting them into this map of teams, basically. And then we update the team state so it can tell all the customer or the clients connections that they're they're ready to go. Uh, so that's a match game. <coughs> the match game itself also does the balancing of teams. Um, so all the teams that are connected will go through this kind of. Uh, basically, it iterates over all the teams and then it creates a rating for them using Bayesian balancing, which I'm taking from the average rank of the team, multiply or average rank of all players in the game, which I don't have the data yet, so I'm just, I'm using the ELO rating system, so I'm gonna map that uh, later, but right now it's like set to 1200 or something. Um, multiply it by the rank of the team, and then add that to the duration that they've been in queue, uh, times the average queue duration. Again, I don't have this information yet, so I'm just guesstimating. Then divide that by the rank and the average queue time. So what this means is, the matchmaker is going to tick, which I disabled for now, but <clears throat> it's going to tick. And every time that it ticks, it'll recalculate uh, how long they've been in queue and who's in queue. And then from there, be able to uh, match people up and say, okay, these two, these two teams are very close together, so we can kick them off into their own session to start and build a world and open the level and all that other stuff. So that's pretty much where I'm going. Um, 
yeah, so matchmaker will generate the world, level and session. Players are assigned to the session. Uh, the world's going to call begin play, and it's going to spawn the players. And I'm going to give them like a maybe one minute timer, maybe less, uh, just a pregame setup, just to make sure everybody's connected, do some t health tests or whatever. And then once the game starts, there's going to be four states, and this comes. Pr it's pretty much taken from Atlas Reactor, where you have four different states of the game. You have a dash state where you can basically move your characters. Um, and it's limited to like once every three turns or something. It's a way to evade or uh, yeah, or gap close if you need to. And then you have the game fight stage, which is where the attack actions. So if you're shooting at a cell or a person who's in the cell, <coughs> this would happen at that. And they would all occur basically at the same time. Um, and then you have the move state. So after you fire, you then get to either run away or find cover or do whatever you need to do for that. Um, and then there's that's basically that round is over um, and then you go back into the decide state so it's going to basically be the state machine of looping back and forth so that's pretty much what the gameplay is going to look like and what I realized is I can since it's cell or grid based what this lets me do is when you look at a level you just have to make like a bunch of tiles and what I did was I came up with this idea of having basically tile settings so you'd have like a open spot or you'd have a wall which would give you cover um, you'd have a stealth uh, power up area an unwalkable area and then power ups for various things and then you would have oh I'm sorry walls are like literal walls you can't see through them, you can't attack through them then you have other attributes that you can apply to those uh, tiles so you could have like a fence on one side of the, the cell or whatever and then basically the way you would design your map is you just like create these nice little 2d arrays of like open area with a fence on the east side uh, or an open area with a fence on the west side or the south side and then wall wall power ups um, and then you can add other attributes you can just or these all together because i put them as uh yeah bit masks or they will be so that's pretty much how the world's going to lay out and what's really cool about that is a the math is should be easy for me because i suck at math um so once i have that figured out i'll be able to actually just run stuff constantly so i can just like run thousands and thousands of iterations of games and try out different settings and see how they impact and abilities and all those other things <coughs> so that's pretty much where i'm at and now I'm basically deciding how to rewrite the clients and server stuff. So, with that in mind, let's see what we can do here. All right, so we're going to have the Chan server. I'm going to rename this eventually. Accepts the client, creates the new Chan client. Um, yep, has a timeout just in case we get blocked. Uh, sends the client event in this case we are saying event type of zero which is going to add a client to the map I don't think I need to put a lock on this because I'm only running it in one go routine and that one go routine should be the one that's writing to it but I'll run it with the race detector to make sure um, all right and then we have a process client message which is doing nothing at the point this point um right so chain client sends message so we can actually send something to back to the clients network loop decode the message send the event struct to the server with the event type in this case it's going to be a network message um yeah so i think i can write some tests now Let's write a chan <coughs> test Right, so I just realized I do not have a WebSocket client. I only have a server. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember if this package includes one. Should. Um, con, con, WS package. Premium for package. Oh, here we go. 
to be less diameter. Let's see how they test it. They might not actually create a client. Well, let's just import it. Let's see if we can figure it out. Alright. Uh, WS client is equal to WS. Okay, we have. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make sure that the server works first. Listen to it. That might help. Boop, 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 boop. Right, so we need to import HTTP, do the upgrade, to the server. Right, so we should be able to run the test and kill it. Actually, let's run it from the command line so we can actually play with it. Split this. Boop. the server works. <coughs> so we will run this, you know, I'm just going to cheat for now right here. So just check that go routine. And we are going to make a new client. So I'm going to do this to, did I just have a new client? Fails, just Google it. Alright, so we have job plus. Look at that, ready to go. Okay, so we just create a dialer. Let's just send some fake JSON. Yes, I'm excellent at typing. Okay. Pass T. That needs to be byte. Good deal. This is totally gonna probably break, but we'll see. Look at that, beautiful. Did not even connect to the right server. Also beautiful. Invalid memory, no point, sir. Panic, panic, panic. I imagine I need to just set something else up here. And then. Connection. Don't have a reader. Don't have an answer. Um, yeah, let's go back here. 
it's just sending normal stuff. That's not helpful. What's with Handle punk. Also, just chuck in JavaScript, but um, yeah, I think this is mainly for server stuff, not client. Whatever. All right, so we have our dialer. That should just give us connection. I don't know why I need to go through all this garbage. So it is. Time for debugs. Yep, 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 yep. See client side. Yep, client side. Doop, doop. Oh my god, I do not care. Pop up. So like even getting a frame here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Exactly what I don't want to see. Okay. Let's go to see if it even gets to this point. So clearly, it's, it doesn't have enough information about it. Huh, let's go back to the error message. Um, let's run from here. Oh, dang. What the hell's running on? Did I not kill the test? Oh, Jesus, it's still running. So, WS helper, test check client server, cause helper, right, 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 and pane at right. Size, copy, yada, yada. Yeah, it looks like I should just be able to just try that and see what happens. So pretty much what I'm doing. Nope. Oh, I was writing first. Let me try to read first. Thanks. 
Russian feast. Ah ha ha. Gonna cheat. Don't hate me. Forgot that I actually checked that. <laughs> okay, so we don't want that. Just we need security. There we go. There. Now I should have a client. creating a client here we're going to then check if we timed out send the client events I just don't care okay or is this running indefinitely I'll go parked except for this one. Oh, yeah, of course. So let's listen. So we definitely want to check that. And actually, don't we know we're connecting now? So we don't need that anymore. We should have made it here, to be honest. Let's see what happens if I rerun this. have made it to the server unless all right separate liner here so it should be reading sign it to event there it should be just sending it right then I don't know why it would not let's try that again channel make that's what's called a server go easier to spot on my eyes so have a client event send it there um, I think just for debugging let's start with two things send Try that first. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to get rid of the select statement. Um, usually, you want to put these things anytime you're sending on a Go channel, you definitely want to keep some way of it stopping. Otherwise, something bad could happen. Like, it's going get stuck forever. So, I always try to make uh, timeouts or context uh, close checks or whatever. But it might be something wrong. We'll see. 
try this again. There we go. Great squad event. Gets to here. Am I not listening properly? I never sent it. Which makes me think I am not listening. But it is absolutely listening. It's listening in its own go routine. This should be spawned with a different go routine. And it's not being brought. Okay. Attempt number two. Actually. Next server event channel. Send the client event. Would that select statement mess it up? Weird. Alright. What else? Okay. So I got it sending. Ah, no, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That select statement should not cause that to happen. Nope. Boop. Do this again. Calling the wrong fucking timer context. Damn, they don't feel me. Stop debugging. Get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. It's a noggy. So if we have timeout context done, shit's in the channel. It's closed when working on the app's done. There's context canceled. Mm hmm. It's just like quitting out before I can see it. Yeah, we got this from the terminal. I mean, yeah. Okay, chant client server. But we're not sending anything back, so it's just gonna sit there, probably waiting on the right. So Okay, so that's the old one, chain serve. All right, so we're now at the point where we create our chain clients. Let's do another debug statement. Client blur added. in a proper message. So now it is garbage. Let's take out um, message. Message and another message. Let's give it type 
Data is equal to just um, uh, Let's not like that. Message JSON Marshall. Famous last words should work. <clears throat> what do we think? Is it going to work? It's not going to work. It's definitely not going to work. Right, so we need to get to this point. that point. Okay. So we have the client. Chan client should now be also uh, Send the router, send the decoder, encoder. Oh, wait a minute, aren't I? Am I expecting a read first? Where's my client go? Oh, crap, just close it. Yeah. I'm expecting a read first, so I need to. Something stupid back. easier when the decoder is there not to do all the struct JSON Marshall garbage. Alright. Let's see if I can get that response back. Noise. Frames from client to server must be masked. Huh. Uh, 
Is that because of the it's from client to the server? Get it back. Uh, okay, let's debug. Let's make sure that works. Um, yep. Yep. Oh, jeez, what am I doing? Chain client. Chain server. Didn't actually, you know, it might just be exiting early. Crappiest uh, web sockets client, so I would never ever leave this in a test. I will rewrite all this later, but um, at least we can confirm now that it works. So, what I want to make sure I mean, I'm not even sure it's worth going the other route with um, the non channel based one. Where the hell is that server? Because again, there's no protection from getting. I mean, there's protection from the users connecting, but there's no protection from messages coming in. Basically, a client would get spun off on its own. Go routine. This is the old one. That would just like read in messages and process them, and then do the decoding inside the clients. So it's doing a lot of work here. So you can get really hammered. And if you have, let's say 3000 clients, they're gonna just wreck everything. Whereas, ah, uh, but the benefit of this is that uh, everything is in its own Go routine. So I can basically uh, not have to worry about contention is too much because every single client, so again if there's 3,000 clients and we have this Chan client or Chan server basically this right now is in a single go routine I guess I could put it in a worker pool and have like four of them but then I have to worry about locking, oh you know I didn't care about the race detector I don't know if this is a race detector, let's find out oh nice One client, let me make two. Let's make three for fun. Uh, what if things can happen? Is this legitimate? Should be. Come on down. Data, send message, blah blah blah. 
Uh, yeah. Let's make sure the race detector is working. Let's do this. It's, um, blue ball out. Yeah, good point. And then this should really piss off the race detector. Upgrading running a no, that should totally piss off the race detector. That's really weird. Huh. Alright, well. That's very surprising. Huh. Because it should be writing to a map that is not being mutex locked. Well, now I'm worried about the race detector. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure I'll have some race conditions later. Cool. Okay. Well, I think that's enough for round one. I will be back later. Thank you for watching.